We are going to be talking about many things in today's weather forecast, including severe weather, lots of cool weather coming behind a cold front, and your tropical weather update at the end of the video. So if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel down below. Make sure to like the video down below as well, and leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. Welcome back, everyone, to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. And also, just set a reminder that this Saturday, August 31st, 2024, we'll be showing you your winter forecast for 2024 and 2025. We're going to be doing that on Saturday, August 31st, so mark your calendars for that. So without further ado, let's dive into the forecast here for today. And you can see there are a lot less heat headlines across the United States. In the orange, though, for portions of the Mid-Atlantic back into the Ohio Valley and into the St. Louis region, we still have those heat advisories and some very small areas of southeastern Pennsylvania and southwestern New Jersey that do still have those excessive heat warnings. Red flag warnings out here into much of the state of Wyoming, into the Panhandle and Nebraska, and southwestern South Dakota with a combination of warmer temperatures, dry soil, and some wind to create some fire weather concerns out there. Let's look here at your surface fronts and your pressure here as well. We got a stronger low pressure starting to develop across the northwestern United States. There's that low pressure that brought all that severe weather yesterday into the Chicagoland area and up into Michigan. That's going to continue to push east into the mid-Atlantic. But watch this new low pressure system up into southern Canada as it develops. It's going to occlude, but a developing cold front will sweep across the northern plains on Thursday and then eventually across most of the northern U.S. on Friday, August 30th to end the work week. And you can see the reflection of those temperatures will be with that cold front as it moves through. So this afternoon, more of that heat. Not as hot, though, across portions of the United States as what we saw yesterday, thankfully, but still a hot day nonetheless. Some cooler air up there into Minnesota, Wisconsin, and northern lower Michigan, and then back into the Pacific Northwest is noted for this afternoon. Going into tomorrow, Thursday afternoon, again, still a hot day. We're at 94 in Des Moines tomorrow afternoon. We're at 96 in Omaha, 95 in St. Louis, and 96 down into Little Rock. It's still going to be a hot day, and when you add on the heat indexes, it'll likely be in the triple digits. But here is that start of the cold front. Behind that, into the Dakotas, Nebraska, and westward, we're into the 60s and 70s tomorrow afternoon. And then here comes that cold front as we go into Friday afternoon. This is going to feel like night and day as we get into Friday for places like Chicago. Chicago. Yes, it's 88. Still very warm there on Friday, but we'll take 88 over 98 with a heat index to 115. I'll tell you that right now. And it's definitely feeling a lot cooler further to the north into the 80s and comfortable humidity as we go into Friday afternoon. And looking at Friday evening for those Friday night football games here. I know a lot of schools in the northern U.S. are going to be starting those Friday night football games this week. So if you are in Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, nice temperatures for Friday evening kickoff. So we'll be into the 60s and 70s for those kickoff times this Friday evening. Now looking here at your storm reports, going back to Tuesday, August 27th. This was yesterday. We had a lot of overperforming severe weather in the state of Michigan yesterday with a lot of wind reports. Even the Chicagoland area there in Cook County northern Indiana, northwest Ohio, and then that stretched all the way back here just south of the Davenport Quad Cities region and toward Kansas City. We did see a lot of those wind reports, 154 of those to be exact. Thankfully, no tornadoes reported yesterday. We did have some hail reports, but the total number of reports did go up to 168 yesterday, so a lot of severe weather reports did come in. Now, going into today, we have another couple of areas of severe weather of concern. We do have a level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk upgrade for parts of the central Dakotas today. And then we have that slight risk level two out of five in the yellow stretching from Indiana eastward toward the mid-Atlantic coast of New Jersey and Delaware as we go through today. Biggest concern will be wind, 60 miles per hour or greater. Also those hailstones, quarter size or larger, unless you're in central the Dakotas there, that's where we could be seeing hailstones two, maybe even three inches in diameter in this hatch shaded zone. And then a couple of tornadoes could be possible today from Bismarck all the 
the way down into Aberdeen as we go into the afternoon and evening, up to a 5% chance of tornadoes within a 25 mile radius in this area. So let's walk you through that this afternoon. Pretty quiet will be the radar this afternoon. I think as we go into the evening, we're going to be watching out some feisty supercells that will be developing there, especially into North Dakota. These could pose a risk for all hazards, tornadoes, damaging hail, and some large, strong winds as well. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Otherwise, some isolated activity and that slight risk from New Jersey and Delaware all the way back west into Indiana this evening. And then as we go into early Thursday morning, this is after midnight, but before sunrise, you can see those storms start to cluster up, but weaken a little bit across the northern U.S. as we go into that time frame. And notice the coverage and intensity of storms and that slight risk from Indiana eastward of the mid-Atlantic coast is pretty much non-existent in early Thursday morning. Going into Thursday, that cold front progression is still there. We have another slight risk level two out of five from the Twin Cities in La Crosse, Wisconsin, all the way down toward Des Moines and Ames, Iowa. So we'll be keeping an eye on that marginal extending all the way back into central Kansas. And we also have a level one out of five marginal risk over here into the mid-Atlantic into parts of uh, Maryland, into parts of West Virginia, Virginia, and also North Carolina. We'll be keeping an eye on. Then on Friday, we have another level one out of five marginal from the Detroit area down into Toledo and Akron, back to Indianapolis, Chicago, Peoria, and down into Springfield, Illinois, north of St. Louis as we go into Friday with the progression of that cold front. So when that cold front comes through, it will be dropping some rain, whether or not the storms will be severe or not. We're going to be seeing some decent rains across the northern U.S. into the upper Mississippi Valley region from Minnesota into western Wisconsin in the Hawkeye state of Iowa. We could be dropping around an inch, maybe two inches of rain down there. Uh, we'll be watching out for some flash flooding concerns. And then from Houston towards New Orleans, we'll be seeing a couple more inches of rain there. And then the west coast of Florida uh, from Tampa Bay down to Naples, Fort Myers, and all the way down toward the Key West region. Could be seeing a couple of inches of rain. Bone dry though out west, so we'll be keeping an eye on those fire weather concerns. But late in the week here, this is tomorrow and into Friday, you can see there is some concern for flash flooding and runoff from the rainfall as it's going to be coming down in a short amount of time as that cold front comes through. So the Twin Cities region, La Crosse, getting into Des Moines and even Waterloo, Iowa, back there towards portions of Kansas City or just north of Kansas City is the greatest concern for flash flooding. It's a slight risk for flash flooding both of those days to end the work week. Heading into Labor Day weekend, yeah, I know it's hard to believe we're actually getting closer to Labor Day weekend already. Saturday, August 31st to end the month of August into the first day of September on Sunday, September 1st, we're going to see a big pattern change. Big trough up here in southeastern Canada and big ridge starting to develop across the Pacific Northwest. What that will mean for our temperatures is Saturday afternoon, we're going to Still be in the 90s some heat out there in the southeast but a lot of the cooler weather will continue refreshing humidity across the northern u.s and we're going to start to heat up a little bit across the west and the pacific northwest with the presence of that ridge but look at our high temperatures in southeastern canada sunday afternoon ontario quebec even eastern manitoba will be struggling to reach 60 degrees up here as we go into sunday afternoon with that trough present a lot of cloud cover maybe some precipitation up there as we go through through Labor Day weekend. And then Labor Day itself on Monday, September 2nd, that trough will get a little bit stronger as it moves into Quebec and into portions of upstate New England. And you can see we're going to definitely see that ridge kind of flatten out and weaken a bit as it drifts further east into the central U.S. towards Labor Day itself. Waking up Labor Day morning on Monday morning, September 2nd, you can see we're going to be waking up likely with a lot of our windows open with temperatures into the 50s like this across the north, 60s, 70s, can't complain further south. Some heat down there in the southeast as we go to Labor Day, middle and upper 90s at times, especially from Mississippi into Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, and northern Florida but 70s to go around and some areas actually struggling to reach 70 like Detroit and even the Grand Rapids area or even the Twin Cities as we go into Monday afternoon on Labor Day definitely struggling to reach into the 70s that day. Precipitation prospects through the weekend here the Labor Day weekend time frame that cold front will continue to press a little bit further to the east on Saturday. Precipitation lining up from the Quebec region all the way down into New England, the Ohio Valley down toward the Southern Plains where we desperately need the rain down there into the Lone Star State of Texas, especially West Texas. 
And then you can see that lingers into Sunday. Pretty strong rains up here into portions of eastern Ontario into Quebec, 989 millibar low there on Sunday. And then as we go into Labor Day, you can see the heavier rains continue again across the Lone Star State of Texas and the Sooner State of Oklahoma and the Sunshine State of Florida as we go into Monday. Looking at precipitation here through the work week, or sorry, through the holiday weekend here, Saturday, August 31st through Monday, Labor Day itself on September 2nd. The heaviest of the rains will be across West Texas and we really do need the rain down here a couple of inches of rain can be expected Houston to New Orleans could see a couple more inches of rain Miami down there in Dade County could see a couple more inches of rain and then pretty north uh, pretty dry across the north and pretty uh, dry out west as well as we go through the holiday weekend a quick update on the tropics here uh, the National Hurricane Center in Miami Florida has a low probability a 20% chance of something developing here in the main development region and moving west toward the northern windward island islands as we go through the next week, through the next seven days. There has been a lot of chatter on social media that this hurricane season is long gone. It's over. Um, it's not over, folks. We are in an ENSO neutral uh, depiction right now here in a climate phase, and we are actually entering in very soon to likely a weak La Nina phase of climate. And what this means is the once we get into a weak La Nina phase, into the fall, it's going to help to ignite more of those tropical waves from the coast of Africa into the main development region and then taking a run toward the United States. We have to be patient, folks. It's all, It's only August 28th today. We still have September. We have October. We have November. And even early December, we could still have some named storms out there. And look at these water temperatures here. Tell me that we can't have named storms late into the fall, even early winter months with these water temperatures. They will not be cooling down anytime soon. So I'm looking at climatology as well, we're not even to the peak of the hurricane season here for the next one to two weeks, but even the slow climb down on the ladder, even into October and November and early December. So we have a lot of the season left to go. I know we're almost 50% of the way through, but all the chatter on social media that I've been reading and stuff like that, saying that this hurricane season, the record breaking hurricane season will not come to fruition. We can't say that yet until the hurricane season has come to a close. So let's, uh, you know, stop Stop talking about potential uh, reevaluation of any forecasts out there. The forecasts are still there, and we still have a lot of the season to go. We have the second half of the season to go. We'll be tracking it right here for you on this channel. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below as we're getting close to 100,000 subscribers. I appreciate all the new subscribers, all the old subscribers supporting my channel. I appreciate all of you. Make sure to press the like button, the thumbs up down below. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. We'll get to those after the video, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Wednesday out there.